Hi everybody, it's Marcy, and I wanted to come back and have another play with pockets for Plenty of Pockets, and today I'm going to play with some Crafty Irina style pockets. And I say Crafty Irina style because I know she is credited with the Crafty Irina pocket. The first person I saw make one of these was Gail Agustinelli. I've looked for Crafty Irina's video, but I, as yet I've not found it. So I don't know if I'm making them the way she did or not, but it's the same type style. So that's why, that's why I say that. Okay. So first, I'm going to start off with the one I think is the simplest. So you just need a sheet of paper, any size, any kind, whatever you want. On this one, I'm using an old uh, dittoed form from a train station or a railroad company. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is fold my paper in half long, wide, long ways. Okay, then I'm going to fold it up this way. But, as you'll notice, my paper is has a definite direction to it. So, in order to get my text to not be upside down, I have to turn my paper upside down and fold up this way. Then my text is facing right side up. If if it doesn't bother you to have stuff upside down, then you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay. So that's done. Now, we've got four corners. One, two, three, and four. The first thing I'm going to do is take my top corner and I'm going to fold it back. Now I'm actually going to unfold to do this just because that makes it a little easier for me. All right, and I'm going to glue that flap down. Now, as I'm making these pockets in these videos, I just to keep the videos shorter, I'm not going to be decorating them. I will be making these and simply putting them in my stash to use at a later date. Okay, so first one glued down. Now I'm going to take my second corner and fold it down, but less than the first corner. And normally when I do this one, I have to pick it up and play with it to be sure that my folds are somewhat parallel. They don't have to be exact. This is junk journaling. Nothing has to be exact. Okay, so be sure I'm happy with that. As you can see, I already refolded it a little bit. And I'm going to glue this one down. This is actually the second time I've made this video because the first time I made it, I ran out of memory on my camera and 
so it only got about halfway done. Okay, so there's my second fold. Now for this one, this paper is rather thin and frail, so that's why I'm going to stop on this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is my back two are actually going to be glued together, which will give them a little more strength. So I don't need to glue there, but I do need to come up this way. Actually, I wish I hadn't done that yet. Okay. Before I do any more gluing, any edges that you want inked, it is easier to do the inking before you get them glued down. So I'm going to ink that edge. I'm going to come back and ink this edge. Yeah, so now I'm going to have extra, extra stuff for my stash, but that's okay. The more I have in my stash, the better off I am. Even if it's not and I think I've said this before, but even if it's not a design, even if what I have in my stash is not on the paper or the design that I want, sometimes just having it in there is a good reminder of, oh yeah, I can make one of those for uh, the journal I'm working on. Okay, now, let's continue gluing. So now, I'm going to glue, and this is just a continuation of gluing these two together. I'm going to bring the glue up here. to glue that. Okay, now we're just going to glue this side and this side. And you've got a double pocket. If you made this a floating pocket, you would have a double pocket. If you lay it down on your journal, you could have a triple pocket by gluing here, here, and up this side and leaving a space back there for an additional pocket, which is why I wanted a little extra strength there. The other thing you could do is take that and stitch right around the edges, which is probably what I would do. So that one is very simple. I mean, it, it no cutting, you got gluing and inking, and you've got a great little pocket. For this one, I'm going to use this book page, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Fold it in half. And again, I've got text, so I'm going to turn it upside down. Actually, is it? Nope. I want it to go that way. I have to fold it that way.
so I've misplaced my bone folder. Do any of you have tools that it's like the one tool that it's hard to get by without? You've got it worked in or whatever that it's just your absolute favorite? Yeah, that's me with my bone folder. And I have no idea where it went. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold the front page down. And I'm going to fold the second one down. Get it. There we go. But this time, because my paper's a little thicker and sturdier, I'm going to go ahead and fold a third corner back. Now, as you'll notice, I'm right side up here, but that side, that text is upside down. And that will, might drive me a little insane. So, what if I... Oh, I'll just have to lift with it. I don't like the way that looks. I was going to say, you could fold this one forward, but then I've got text going this way, plus you can still see the upside down. So I'm just going to have to live with the upside down. So basically for me, if I've, if I've got a choice, I'd rather it not be upside down. But if not, it's not going to kill me. Okay, so now I'm going to unfold everything and we're going to glue our flaps down again. Helps to get glue on the paper, not the glass mat. Does me no good to have glue on the glass mat. And fold this one down. I hope everyone is doing well and staying as safe as you possibly can. Our state went on, the entire state went on lockdown, not lockdown, stay, under stay-at-home order at midnight. Some of the larger counties, mine included, had already done stay-at-home stuff, but now they've made it statewide. Okay, so before I do any more gluing, I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges. Wow, I can't even get the pen and the glue. There we go. Whew. I'm having troubles today, I tell you what. Okay, that one. And that one. And I'm not worrying about doing all of the edges. I'm just going to the places that it will be more difficult to get to once. Uh, once uh, I've got stuff glued in. Or glued down. Okay. 
see like that edge in there I can do after the fact. Okay, so now let's start with this one. And all we need to do is Let's see. Basically, <laughs> we need glue from this edge down to here. So maybe if I start it this way, run it all the way down. Bring up the little over. Boy, I am a mess. Okay, so that takes care of that, and then we will need glue from here to the fold. And on this side, we will need glue from the fold all the way up to the top. Okay. Boy, I am truly just a hot mess today. All right. So then, with this one, you've got one, two, three pockets, plus when it goes on your journal, uh, three pockets as a floating pocket, or potentially four if you just attach it along those sides and then you've got something behind. Uh, the other thing that might be kind of cool is to put a hinge on there and do it that way. Okay, so there's the second one. Now the third one is one that actually I uh, kind of was playing around the first time I made the video and kind of came up with this idea. So let's do it again here. Okay, now this one I'm being a little careful because there's printing on that side. And this is just a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I've cut down to 10 inches. Uh, if, I, if I did the whole 12 by 12, which you can certainly do, that would make your pocket 6 inches wide, which is too big for most of my journals. So I cut it down to 10 inches. So it will be five inches wide, and that will fit most of my journals. Okay, so, but I want, okay, that should be fine then. Right. Well, it, it'd be better there. Yes, I think it'll be better, okay. All right. So again, pulling it in half, and this scrapbook paper has been uh, tea stained. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it up. This paper doesn't have any true directionality that I have to worry about, so that's kind of nice. For that. Now, 
What I want to do with this one is I actually want this one to be able to go into my journal as a page, which means I need something over here to go on the other side of the signature. If I want this in as a page, then I need something to wrap around. And I could just make a hinge, but I've got this paper. So what I'm going to do, okay, one, two, three, I've got my four corners. I'm going to take my fourth or back corner, and I'm holding it so I know which one is my fourth corner. Okay, and I've turned it so that this is my fourth corner. And I am going to cut it at the fold line and up to that center fold line. Okay, now, so now that fourth corner is free. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and move forward with what's left and make my first fold down here. Okay, so there's my first pocket. There's my second pocket, and because my scrapbook paper is only single-sided, it's kind of neat because you have a uh, design here, and then you've got some blank, and then you've got design again here. Okay, so I only get the two pockets here, but that's okay. That's what I want. I could have made a third one, but I cut my page free. So now I'm going to do just like I did with the others, and I'm going to go ahead and glue my flaps down. There's one flap down. Okay, so I've got my flaps glued down. Now, because I cut away the folded edge here, this one will need to have glue run across the bottom and up the side. So I'm going to put glue here, up the short side, and across the bottom. And glue that down. And of course I forgot to distress before I... started the gluing. Too sad if I can go ahead and 
get this. And like I said, you can distress afterwards. It just makes it it's so much easier to do it before you do the gluing. All right. Let's add another drop of glue here. And I'm going to go ahead and distress this edge a little bit. Although with it being tea dyed, it doesn't show up much. All right. Now, again, because we've cut them away on... For this one, I will need to glue this edge and this edge. So the gluing on this one is a little different. Just because we cut away that fourth corner. Not cut it away, but cut it apart. Okay. So now I've got a version of the first pocket that I made, but for the back sheet is not doubled. because I cut the second part of it away. But then what I that means is I can use this in a journal as a page. Now the only thing is, as you can see, that means the pocket goes right up to your where you're going to be binding your journal. So to alleviate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a little bit of a gutter. And it doesn't have to be much. Just maybe a quarter of an inch or so, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Just line those up. Fold it down. Either I didn't fold evenly or my paper's not even. But now you've got a gutter so that when you put this in your journal, your pocket is not right in your, where you're going to be binding your journal. I'm going to do that again. I think my paper must not be even, so I'm going to make it. Sorry, I got so quiet. I'm trying to figure out my blunder here. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Mine isn't real straight, but now you can actually see the, the pocket actually ends here. And you've got a little bit of a gutter so that your pocket is not in 
the center where you will be binding your journal. Um, and again, you can sew around it. I would just sew this outer edge somewhat to the inside, not right on top of where your gutter is, and then around and up this way. So that's another way, and then you've got your pocket and a page, and then when you get over to the other side of the signature, you've got another page. So that's the way to do that. Anyway, I hope this helps you a little bit. Uh, these are the three we made here. These are the ones I made earlier when I made the video the first time. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope everyone's staying healthy and happy and happy crafting. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.